At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, including the exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats featuring art such as the memorable Dacon Blackblade, so get yours today. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budgets, standards or modern decks, and this week we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck in standard, a deck that's all about ramping and drawing cards. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting with our one drops, where of course we have the full four copies of Lanor Elves. We also have a single copy of Thomanic Compass, an artifact that lets us search up additional lands and eventually transforms into Spires of Araska, which can blank an opposing creature. We also have the full four copies of Blink of an Eye to interact with our opponent, can bounce a, an opposing a non-land permanent, and if we kick it we also get to draw a card. Then we also have four copies of Elfheim Druid, another mana dork that also taps to add double green to our mana pool when we're trying to cast kicked spells, and besides Blink of an Eye, our next card is also a card with kicker, Grow from the Ashes, which is a sorcery that lets us search up a basic land and put it into play, and if we kick Grow from the Ashes we get to search up two basic lands and put them in play. They also enter the battlefield untapped, which can be relevant if we're trying to cast multiple spells in the same turn. And of course, both Grow from the Ashes and Blink of an Eye synergize nicely with the Elfheim Druid. And then another 3 mana ramp card in the deck is Spring to Mind, the Aftermath card. Spring lets us search up a basic, put it into play tapped, and then from the graveyard we can cast Mind at 6 mana, add instant speed to draw 2 cards, so nice mana sync. And then at 4 mana we have another Aftermath card, Commit to Memory, which can function as a counterspell or a bounce spell, and then the Memory part can let us reset both players' hands, which can be useful if we already have a big mana advantage on the board and we're looking for more action. Then we also have two copies of Bounty of Deluxa, an enchantment that is both a card advantage engine and a way to generate additional mana. So on the first upkeep that the Bounty of Deluxa is in play we'll get to draw a card, and then on the subsequent turn we'll get to generate three additional mana, and those will keep alternating. Next up we have four copies of Tatiova, Banthic Druid, a 5 mana 3-3 that lets us draw a card and gain one life whenever a land enters battlefield under our control, so synergizes very nicely with cards like Grow from the Ashes and Spring to Mind. Then we get to our win conditions, where we have two copies of Multani, a 6 mana 0 0 that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each land we control and each land in our graveyard, also has reach and trample, so a giant threat. And as if that weren't enough, for 2 mana we can return 2 lands we control to our hand, to return Multani from our graveyard back into our hand, so it's a threat that keeps on coming back, and also synergizes nicely with Tatiova if we do happen to return some lands to our hand, we might be able to draw even more cards if we have a Tatiova in play. Then we also have two copies of Nezahal, Primal Tide, a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven that cannot be countered, and says we can't have a maximum hand size which can be useful, and whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell we get to draw a card, and we can discard three cards at any point to exile Nazahal and return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step, so we can kind of save it from opposing removal spells, and of course with all the cards we'll be drawing, that's not going to be an issue. And then our final win condition is two copies of Sandworm Convergence, an 8 mana enchantment that says creatures with flying can't attack us or planeswalkers we control, and at the beginning of our end step we get to make a 5-5 green worm creature token, so a great way to shore up the ground while the enchantment prevents flyers from attacking us, so a great win condition for our deck. And then last but not least, two copies of Pull From Tomorrow, a great way to sink all our extra mana into, as we'll get to draw X cards for X and double blue, and then just discard one card, so great card advantage card in our deck. Then our mana base is pretty straightforward, four copies of Botanical Sanctum, four copies of Hinterland Harbor, then a lot of basic lands, ten forests, and six islands. Then going over the sideboard we have one Silent Gravestone against graveyard heavy decks, three negates against control decks, two Sorcerer's Spyglass to shut down Planeswalkers, Vehicles, or other things like Gate to the Afterlife, two Crushing Canopies against Enchantments and Lyra Dawnbringers, then we have three Brontodons against Artifacts and Enchantments, we have an Archer which is great against the Mono Red Aggressive decks with a lot of One Toughness creatures, and then both Nissans, Nissa Vital Force and Nissa Steward of Elements, which are both great against the more controlling strategies that aren't great at pressuring our Planeswalkers, and then a reverse rebuke against the more mid-rangey decks that put a lot of permanence in play. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand looks great. We've got some interaction with our blue cards, some ramp and some card draw. That's basically all we need. 
opponent with the turn one island. Into Siren Storm Tamer. Ooh, this is the mono blue flyer stack. But we found an Alfame Druid, which is going to let us cast the turn three grow from the ashes with Kicker. And then our lands will come into play untapped. So we still have access to Blink of an Eye potentially. All right, blue red. So this is a wizard deck instead. And a braid on the druid. All right, so thought they were mono blue flyers. They were wizard deck instead. Kill the druid. That's okay. Just gonna take one here. And then we'll probably just play normal grow from the ashes here. And get an island. And Curious Obsession, yep. Do have Blink of an Eye for next turn, but this turn it will hit us. So let's untap, cast Blink of an Eye with Kicker. Hope to draw land. Alright, opponent had to dive down, so they're all in on this kind of plan. So I guess they're just a blue-red aura deck and not necessarily a wizard's deck, which explains uh, their card choices. Interesting that they're still playing a Braid, though. One would think that an all-in Auras deck doesn't have room for a ton of removal. Alright, I think I'll just uh, upkeep, use Commit to Memory on the Storm Tamer. That way, if they do have a counter spell or a protection spell, they're forced to tap man in their own turn. Alright, Spell Pierce. So their opponent is successfully protecting their Storm Tamer. And drawing two cards a turn. But if we get to six mana for Multani, we'll have a giant blocker for the Storm Tamer. Alright, there's a land. So let's play Multani. Hope they don't have a Lookout's Dispersal here. Say go. So now we've got a 6-6 six, six with Reach to block the Storm Tamer, which will hopefully stop attacking us now. What is this? Valdu, Keeper of the Flame. If we draw land next turn, we can kick Grow from the Ashes and still play Bounty of the Luxa. So it looks like the Curious Obsession will fall off finally. Alright. And we draw another one. It is a legendary creature, so we can't play both. So I think I'll just be playing a Bounty. And say go. Could have played Grow from the Ashes without kicking it, just to make Multania 7-7. But I don't think that's necessary here. If our opponent attacks, we can block if they have a removal spell afterwards, that's fine, given that we have another Multani anyways. Alright, one with the wind on Valduk. And a Cartouche. Alright, so Valduk's now 6 power, worth of flyers. Definitely still blocking here, but they might just attack with the elementals. So I'll block one of them, take 3. Alright, no abrade to finish off Multani, that's good. Draw an extra card with Bounty. Ooh, Tatiova. Don't have a land drop in hand currently, so Tatiova would not uh, draw us any cards this turn, which is a little sad. Next turn we'll get the mana from Bounty with the Luxa, so we'll be able to play Tatiova and still play a ramp spell afterwards. So I think just to use your mana efficiently, I'll kick this Grow from the Ashes as opposed to playing just a uh, Spring to Mind. And then we could still cast Spring to Mind here, or we can keep it to play after we play Tatiova, which I think is going to be better for us. And at some point we want to start attacking, since otherwise our opponent just keeps pinging us for uh, 3 damage with their elementals. Another Cartouche, so now they'll have 3 elementals attacking us, and yeah, they could just attack for lethal if they attack with everyone. But we do have 3 mana up, so it is a somewhat risky proposition. But they go for it. So if we had another blink of an eye, we could have tried to bounce an elemental opponent. Can maybe sag the storm tamer, but then we don't take lethal and they lose Valduk. Uh, but maybe they have another dive down in hand to make that uh, play work. All right. So on to sideboarding against blue red auras, which I think is a pretty bad matchup to begin with, since we don't have a ton of interaction. Crushing canopy seems like a fine addition, since our opponent's putting all those flying enchantments on their creatures. How about the archer? That seems okay. Can kill storm tamer. If it doesn't have any auras, don't think we want negate, don't think we want reactive destroy enchantments, cards, I'm mainly siding in the canopy just to kill flyers. So just three cards coming in, and then maybe take out a pull from tomorrow, a bounty of the Luxa, maybe cut a spring to mind, 
would like to be on the play. This is not an amazing hand, but if we draw one or two more ramp cards, we get an early Sandworm Convergence down. Hmm, it's definitely sketchy if we don't find a ramp spell soon, but I'll keep. So our better draws include more ramp spells or interaction like Blink of an Eye, Commit Memory, or the sideboard cards we brought in. Alright, Crushing Canopy. I think we still attack with Alf here. Don't foresee needing to use Canopy this turn. Alright, opponent seems to be stuck on one land, so maybe kept a somewhat greedy hand. We'll keep attacking for one with our Elf. So next turn we'll have five mana. So we're getting closer to our expensive cards here. Pull from tomorrow. Alright, I might actually cast a pull from tomorrow main phase for three here, just to make sure that we can find some ramp cards. And I'll do it now to play around any potential spell pierces. Alright, can probably ditch one land here. Did not find any ramp spells, but we did ensure that we can keep playing lands every turn. And there's Champion of the Flame, which will be the recipient of many auras, I'm sure. But a commit memory is a nice answer. So I don't mind attacking with Elf, Bones probably not gonna want to block here. And then we can keep up commit memory and crushing canopy. Bone goes for another Champion of the Flame, sure. So not willing to commit yet to any enchantments, but that's fine, we're not in a hurry. Since this turn we'll get to cast an Azahal. And now with the caster Auras we'll get to draw a card with Nazahal, as well as having a 7-7 body in play. And this Crushing Canopy and Commit Memory should be enough interaction so we don't die. Cartouche, draw a card. And an island to maybe protect our creature from a removal spell. No attacks with the champion. So I don't think we want to place Sandworm Convergence into a spell pierce. So instead I probably just want to play a spring. Get a land. And then attack for 7 with Nazahal. Opponents down to 10. Play a tapped Sanctum. Say go. And if the Sandworm Convergence resolves, we don't really care about the Flyers anymore. And next turn we can pay for a potential Spell Pierce. Opponent goes for Kari Zev's Expertise targeting Nezahal. So first we'll let the Nezahal trigger resolve. We could just exile Nezahal with its own ability, or we can use a Commit Memory. For opponent Spell Pierces we still get to draw a card with Nezahal. Yeah, I don't mind using Commit Memory, force a Spell Pierce, draw a card, and then get rid of some cards we don't need here. Alright, Commit resolves. Opponent does get in for 4, and on our turn we'll get to play Sandworm Convergence and be able to pay for Spell Pierce. Let's attack for 7 first. Opponent chumps. Play a land, play Convergence. And might as well play a druid. Make a 5-5 token. And uh, now opponent is in trouble. Alright, they scoop it up. So on to game 3 against the blue-red auras. Think I liked our sideboard plan. Don't really see anything I want to change at the moment. So let's submit. So it could be that after seeing Sandworm Convergence our opponent brought in some negates. This hand is close. We do have Archer that could potentially interact with their opponent's creatures if they have a Storm Tamer, but we don't have a third land yet, and uh, if we miss a turn or two then the game's over. So I think it's probably better to mulligan. Alright, this sounds much better. And Elfheim Druid is okay. I guess we'll keep it. Let's just cast a turn 3 Blink of an Eye with Kicker, and if your opponent spends time killing the Druid that's fine as well since we still have the Spring to Mind to keep ramping. Alright, there's a Champion of the Flame. Still think we want to play the Druid, since I don't really want to play Blink of an Eye this early. And next turn we can go Islands, play Blink of an Eye with Kicker. Siren Storm Tamer might uh, mess up that plan. Yep, just an Arcane Flight, so opponent keeps up one mana to counter the Blink of an Eye with the Storm Tamer. Gets in for four. 
Ooh, crushing canopy. So I like this. So we can play islands, say go. And then in the opponent's turn, we can go for blink of an eye and then untap crushing canopy. Ooh, opponent goes for an opt end of turn, so they're tapped out. So it might just be better to crushing canopy here to play it safe. And we let our opponent resolve the opt first to give them less information to work with. So they might have scried an enchantment to the top, which now is not going to be very good. Could have used Blink of an Eye with Kicker there, but I think just getting rid of the champion is probably better. Opponent has a Valduk though, has a follow-up, so that's not bad. Storm Tamer gets in. Another Druid. So yeah, now I like just playing another Druid. And then main phasing this Blink of an Eye with Kicker to bounce Valduk. And kind of set them back on tempo a little bit while we keep developing our mana. Opponent replays Valduk and gets in for one. Ooh, Bounty of the Luxa is a nice one. So we can play that plus Spring to Mind. So probably want to play the Bounty first to play around Spell Pier since that's more important. All right, we might take a beating this turn from our opponent, but hopefully next turn we'll be able to find some uh, answers. Cartouche on Valduk. Hopefully we're not just dead here. Could definitely happen if our opponent has two more enchantments, but it looks like they're gonna keep up some mana here. So they do get to hit us for eight. And just a land a draw and another Botanical Sanctum even. Yeah, probably dead here. We can pull from tomorrow for let's say three, which still leaves enough mana to maybe play Crushing Canopy. But I guess we can still draw into the Archer, which can kill Storm Tamer and be a chum blocker for a turn. So yeah, I think pull for three is probably right. All right, resolves, discard a Sanctum. Could play Grow from the Ashes with Kicker, but then uh, we don't have a blocker for the 3-1 Elemental, so that doesn't work. So I think we just have to pass a turn here after playing a Sanctum. Say go and hope uh, to survive a turn here. One with the wind on Valduk. That does kill us. Did not end up uh, finding the Sandworm Convergence this game. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand is okay. We've got uh, some elves to start with. Unfortunately, our only green source enters tapped, but we'll make it work. Turn one, Inventor's Apprentice. So some sort of uh, rat aggro deck with probably some vehicles in there. Prefer playing the elf over the compass here. Just to help develop our mana first. Turn two, Key to the City. All right. Could make the Apprentice unblockable, but they might as well just attack for two here. Opponent discards a Scrap Heap Scrounger to make the Apprentice unblockable. So that's a nice synergy here. So they are red black. Could play Lenor Elves and play Grow from the Ashes without Kicker. But I kind of want to play it with Kicker given the compass in our hand. So instead, I'll play an Elf, play a compass, and attack for one. Our opponent could have an Abrade for the compass, which is a reason to maybe keep the compass in hand until we can transform it right away, but if they're using an abrade this early in the game instead of developing their board, that's fine by me. Opponent pays for the key to the city. And there's a Bowmat Courier, which I think I'm fine blocking since we still get to play Grow From The Ashes Kicked here. All right, on top, play a forest, play grow from the ashes with kicker. I guess the downside of losing the elf is that we don't also get to activate the compass here since we would get the lands untapped with the grow and then with the elf we would have been able to also activate the compass. Next turn we'll get to flip the compass. Another courier from the opponent. And then a braid on the compass. All right. So next turn we'll just be casting a giant pull from tomorrow and then hoping to uh, stabilize from there, find one of our win conditions. All right, let's just play the untapped land. I guess there's no reason to do it now. 
since we can still block with land or elves and trade off for the courier and it's not like the opponent's gonna have counter spells here cut on the land or elves so let's cast the giant pull from tomorrow now and let's see drew multiple tatiovas i think we just get rid of a tatiova and then next turn we go tatiova into a land and then we can still play an elfame druid and then if they kill tatiova that's okay Opponent's almost empty-handed anyways. So elf down. So we will take another 3 down to 10. But then hopefully we can start uh, stabilizing our life total. Is this a Pia? Yep. PNLR making a Thopter token. Time to play Tatiova. Play a Sanctum. Gain life, draw a card. Play Elfame Druid and hope Tatiova survives. So next turn we can play a few ramp spells, draw more cards, gain more life. And the 3-3 body here actually does a decent job of blocking as well. Just a land for the opponent, and they decide to play it instead of cycling, maybe planning to sacrifice a courier here. If we block courier with Tatiova, they could pump with Pia, so I think we just block with the druid. And if they pump, that's fine, since we don't really need the druid anyways. And if they are pumping, then they're not sacrificing and playing more stuff out. Opponent is indeed using Pia. And opponent passes, so they can just get back Scrap Heap Scrounger end of turn. But uh, we'll start by playing an untapped land, drawing a card. Ooh, Grow from the Ashes is excellent here. Draw two more cards, gain two more life. Another Tatiova doesn't do much for us. I think we still want to keep developing our lands instead of playing a Pull from Tomorrow. And now we're definitely fine trading Tatiova for the opponent's creatures. Alright, so we're up to 15 life. Got a full grip. And this blink of an eye is going to be useful too. So let's see how much damage our opponent can do. They can get back a scrap heap. Attack for quite a bunch. Not having found any of our win conditions is a little bit awkward, since now we'll have to maybe pull from tomorrow for a small amount. Opponent does sacrifice Bowman Courier end of turn to be mana efficient. Soulscar Mage into maybe a Chain Whirler, yep. Puts a minus one, minus one counter on Tatiova as well. But at least it's not an unlicensed disintegration. That would have been pretty painful here. So one of our better draws is probably Sandworm Convergence. And here I think I just want to block Pia, since Scrap Heap just comes back end of turn, and this at least gets a creature off the table. So we're down to 8, in a bit of trouble. Opponent says go. Alright, so now what? Can play another Tatiova? That's probably where we should start. Play a land, draw a card. Find even more lands. Our deck should almost be out of lands at this point. So now we could keep up Pull From Tomorrow and Blink of an Eye. I think I like that the best. Opponent uses key to the city, discarding a scrap heap scrounger, which they can now get back. All right. Yeah, so we'll definitely have to use blink of an eye here and we might still be dead, even if we do, since our opponent still has the cut to ribbons in the graveyard. So just didn't manage to find one of our finishers here to uh, stabilize the board. Opponent gets in with everyone. So what's the most damage we can prevent? We can block a three powered creature, bounce another one, and then we're still taking seven down to two and then ribbons for two is just enough i guess we could technically still draw into another blink of an eye so let's bounce a scrap heap and instead it's just another spring to mind we can pull from tomorrow for one i guess it would have maybe been better to not kick the blink of an eye and then play pull from tomorrow for three all right this uh this game is over so managed to ramp quite successfully, but in the end didn't find uh, a way to stabilize. Alright, so how do we want to sideboard against red-black aggro? The archer seems like a nice addition. Brontodon just as a nice blocker that can also blow up an artifact. And I think that's it. Opponent probably has Heart of Kirin. In which case, Spyglass has some merits, but we didn't see any Planeswalkers. Bounty might be a bit too slow in this matchup. And I'll shave a pull from tomorrow as well. And then maybe uh, spring to mind. Alright, let's try this. 
So this previous game, had we maybe kept the Thomanic Compass in hand for an extra turn, we would have been able to maybe transform it and then the land would have been quite useful. But then again, our opponent would have still had the Abrade to uh, kill one of our creatures later in the game. So I'm not sure if it would have actually saved us. Could also make an argument for taking out Lanor Elves so we don't have a one toughness creature against Chain Whirler. But I think uh, we just need the Lanor Elf to have those quick starts. Maybe on the draw, Lanor Elf gets worse. But on the play, I think we definitely want it. And this hand's okay. We've got the Druid to ramp us. Can play a turn 3 Blink of an Eye with Kicker. No turn 1 play from the opponents. Let's play the Druid. Turn to Scrap Heap, that's fine. Ooh, Grow from the Ashes. So this is nice, we get to Grow from the Ashes with Kicker. And then still keep up Blink of an Eye, just in case. Don't get to kick the blink of an eye, but I'm fine taking three from the scrap heap here. And then next turn, we will already have enough mana for Nessahal, at least if the druid survives. And unlicensed disintegration means that's uh, not gonna happen anymore, so I think we let it happen. Don't want to blink of an eye your own creature, I don't think. I would rather keep it to bounce the scrap heap and then play Lanor Elves as well. So they could have a Goblin Chain Whirler, but they started with a Swamp, so they might not be able to cast the Chain Whirler here. Never mind. Sure, still get to cast Nazahal next turn. And then we'll just be bouncing the Scrap Heap. Pick up another Lanor Elves. But now we just want to tap out for Nazahal. And then if they do have another Disintegration, we draw a card and then can exile Nazahal to save him. Opponent does attack, I'll block. So they probably have some sort of removal spell for Nazahal. Then we'll still get to draw a card. So first strike damage happens. This is a window where they would have to use their burn spells, but they don't. A Duress. Draw a card with Nazahal. And Duress misses. So I'm not sure what the opponent's plan was there. Cut on Nazahal, fair enough. So we'll just uh, save our Nazahal and keep the Brontodon. And our opponent replays Scrap Heap. Ooh, Sandworm Convergence. We're one mana away, so our opponent could have another Disintegration to blow up Nazahal, in which case uh, we would have to not play out anything to still be able to save Nazahal. But given that we just picked up Convergence as another win condition, I think we're fine just uh, playing the Brontodon and attacking for 7. And if they do have Disintegration, fine, we'll draw a card. Maybe kill Scrap Heap in response, so we don't take the damage. Opponent cycles a Canyon Slew. Scrap Heap gets in there. I'll block. And opponent says go. Did not find the land for the Convergence but we do get to attack for 10 and then play Lanor Elves. Opponent gets back Scrap Heap. Opponent's down to 3. Play Elf as a, an additional chump blocker maybe. Can also sacrifice a Brontodon to kill the Scrap Heap. Glorybringer. Ooh, Angrath. That could be scary here. Let's see what Angrath wants to do. Tries to steal our Nazahal, that happens. So we can jump with the Elves if we want to. And then could also blow up Scrap Heap, but with our opponents at 3 life, I don't think we want to do that. Get back Angrath, get back Nazahal, and then go to attacks. Don't need to show them the Convergence. Alright, onto a game 3 against Red Black Aggro. Could take out some number of Lanor Elves on the draw, or we could just hope to dodge Chain Warder, which is also reasonable. Yeah, I think we would rather keep the Lanor Elves around. Alright, we're on the draw here, and this ends okay. We've got uh, two Elves that survive Chain Warder, Brontodon as an early blocker, that can maybe blow up an artifact as well. Turn 1 Duress is going to take the Convergence, unfortunately. 
but we still have plenty of other win conditions to draw into and it was going to be a while before we got to 8 mana anyways. Alright, might as well hide the information that we have a Sanctum for a turn. No turn to play, maybe a removal spell for the Druid. I think that's okay. Don't really mind here. And then we'll try and keep the compass around until we can also uh, transform it in the same turn and the braid would have killed the compass here anyways. All right, opponent's still not uh, playing any creatures, so they might have some planeswalkers in hand, perhaps. So we could play around unlicensed disintegration by playing the druid instead of the brontodon or by playing the compass even. All right, opponent does nothing. The downside of playing Druid is that if our opponent did have a Planeswalker on 4, we had no way of uh, pressuring it. Instead our opponent had a cut to kill the Druid and plays an Apprentice, alright. Another Sanctum to draw. Now it might be okay to play Brontodon and the tapped Sanctum. And next turn we can play Compass Activate, get some value. Ravenous Chupacabra, okay. That's a little surprising, a double black card in a Goblin Chain Whirler deck, but I guess some people draw well. Alright, we could also just kick this Grow from the Ashes, which is probably better, and then play Thomatic Compass and it's gonna transform right away, not giving the opponent a chance to abrade it. Alright, so that was a very good draw there, and next turn we get to play a Nazahal. I guess her opponent brought in the Chupacabra after seeing Nazahal. So Chain Warlord pings us for one, and we can use the Spires on the Chupacabra. Alright, let's play Nazahal. And if her opponent has another removal spell, then hopefully it's a Disintegration and we get to draw a card at least. Or mana? Is it another Chupacabra? Wow. Yeah, that's uh, the worst case scenario. So now we need to find something else. A Multani would be quite powerful here. Sandworm Convergence would probably win us the game. Alright, Disintegration. At least I don't have an artifact in play. So our opponent just with a super reactive hand this game. But if we don't draw some action, then it's not gonna matter. I'm actually surprised they used Disintegration on the Elf there. Seems a bit unnecessary. Take 5, down to 9. And we have one turn here to find something. Elf. It's just a chum blocker. And they still have a cut to ribbons in the graveyard. Another disintegration explains why they use the first one. Yep. At least their opponent didn't have any artifacts in place, so these apprentices and disintegrations were a bit underpowered. But I don't think uh, we have a way out of this one. Take six, down to three. And just a forest. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand is uh, not keepable, single land. Too many expensive cards. Alright, this one I'll keep. And I don't think we'll keep the forest on top. Sanctum, say go. And we could hold on to the compass in case of a braids. We'll see what uh, colors our opponent is playing. Island. Into Hope of Girapur. So this is a mono blue flyer stack, I guess. Uh, Alfheim Druid is a nice draw here. Get to play a kick to grow from the ashes next turn. But the Mono Blue Flyer deck is definitely not a great matchup. We'll have to find our Sandworm Convergence as soon as possible. But our opponent casting an Opt Main Phase is promising. Means they might be missing a land drop. Alright, let's uh, kick this Grow from the Ashes. And then we still get to follow it up with the Compass as well. Alright, so we're kind of doing it here. Not a bad turn three. And Stormfleet Aerialist, yep. So here we can play Spring. 
get a land and then can still activate compass to find an extra land or we could not use a compass so that the spire is untapped and we can prevent two damage i think getting a card essentially for free here is probably worth it and then we'll play a tap land say go transform the compass and next turn we can uh, cast mind to draw two cards so we take three down to 15 hopefully we can dodge a tempest gin Although I guess now with the Spires, we have an answer to it. Instead it's a Skyship Plunderer and a Siren Storm Tamer. Ooh, Tatiova's a nice draw. So let's play Tatiova. Play a land, draw a card, gain a life. And let's see, so when the Skyship Plunderer deals combat damage, they get to add a counter essentially, so we'll be using the Spires of Rask on the Plunderer here. opponent could have sacrificed Siren Storm Tamer, but I don't think that's uh, worth it here. Alright, so if a Tiny Pointer opponent draws favorable wins, then we're in trouble. A War Kite Marauder, not bad. Alright, let's uh, untap, find another land, play it, draw a card, cast Mind. Ooh, commit to memory, that can do some things. So let's attack with Tatiova. I'll definitely take the double block, opponent takes it. And then probably better to keep up commit memory as opposed to play Lanor Elf. Opponent with opt, alright, now that our opponent has stepped out we can use commit memory, probably just on the Marauder. Should have let the opt resolve, but I don't think that's going to change too much. So this turn we'll be taking 4. After using the spires, I guess maybe we should have just bounced the uh, skyship plunder instead, since there is a small chance your opponent sacrifices storm tamer on the spires of Araska, and then gets to put a plus one plus one counter on the aerialist. If we ever draw sandworm convergence, the game is over. Opponent with another opt sacrifices hope of Girapur, so we won't get to play any non-creature spells. They add a plunder, so they might be setting up for lethal here, but uh, Blink of an Eye was a nice draw. Let's attack for three. Don't get to cast Blink of an Eye this turn. Gain a life, draw a card. Say go. Let's uh, Blink of an Eye with Kicker on a plunder. That works. And then Spires on the other one. Alright, so we're only taking 3 damage. And our opponent replays some Flyers. Alright, another Blink of an Eye is nice. Let's draw a card first with Tatiova. So we can Blink of an Eye right now. I guess we can attack first, start dealing some damage. Ooh, Multani, hello. And play an elf. When playing the Blink of an Eye, I should have maybe used the Druid to tap for double green. To have one extra mana. Opponent cycles a sensor. They'll need something like an unsummon on Multani. Alright, we got there. On to sideboarding against the Mono Blue Flyers. So definitely want our Archer, definitely want our Crushing Canopies. Brontodon is a consideration. I imagine our opponent will have Curious Obsession and Favorable Winds, and it's also a way to start dealing some damage. So those are all considerations. Maybe we don't want the Brontodon since it does slow down our ramp plan, and I do want all the other cards in our deck essentially. And uh, Maybe Bounty of the Lux is a bit slow. I guess we could shave one pull from tomorrow. Try this configuration. Nazahal isn't going to be amazing, but it does deal 7 damage, so don't think we want our Planeswalkers since they're just going to die to the Flyers. This hand is okay, no ramp, which is the bad part, but Crushing Canopy is one of our better cards. And if we draw any ramp spell to ramp into Tatiova, we'll be in a good spot, so I'll keep. Turn 1 Hope of Girapur. 
down to 19 we go. And a plunder. Ooh, Alfheim Druid, a nice pickup. That means that on turn 5 we can play Tatiova before playing a land, so we get immediate value. And definitely firing off this Crushing Canopy as soon as possible. And yep, Tampa's Gin is going to be the recipient of a Crushing Canopy. Going to do it now to play around any shenanigans. Let's see how many flyers our opponent can add. Just an opt. That's so far so good. And another plunder. Now we can just play Tatiova. Say go. And then next turn we'll see what we'll do. Maybe play Forest and then pull from tomorrow for a bunch. If your opponent does have something like an Unsummon, then we can replay Tatiova, play a Tapped Sanctum. So we take 5, down to 8. So don't have a ton of time to find an answer here. Opponent sacrifices Hope of Girapur. That uh, works out with our Pull from Tomorrow plan, plays another one. Alright, so play the untapped land, gain a life, draw a card. Attack for three. And unsummon on Tatiova end of turn. Yeah, that'll work. So we're taking five. And this pull from tomorrow needs to resolve and needs to find some uh, answers. Opponent sacrifices hope. Let's cast pull from tomorrow. At least most of our answers are instant speed, so the hope of Girapur is not gonna do too much. Discard uh, Tatiova, I guess. Opponent has a third hope of Girapur. Alright, so we can't play much here, but we can play Tatiova and play land, and that one life can definitely matter. We won't be able to play Blink of an Eye Kicked, but that's okay. Replay Tatiova. Play land, draw a card, and I think I'll upkeep Blink of an Eye here to play around a top decked uh, counter spell or protection spell. They did not draw favorable wins, so we do get to live for another turn here. So facing five power of flyers, we will get to grow from the ashes to gain two life. So we'll go back up to 5 and then have a compass in play. So if they don't have anything, ooh, blink of an eye too. Let's uh, play land, gain a life, draw a card. Nazahal, kick to grow from the ashes. Get two more lands. Crushing canopy, wow, we're doing it here. And the Multani. Alright, so we actually have some options here. I think I like... Compass, which also keeps up Crushing Canopy and Blink of an Eye. And I guess we can attack first. And on upkeep, I'll Crushing Canopy the Plunder. That works. All right. And their opponent concedes, so next turn we're able to play Multani to definitely shore up the skies and then quickly win the game thereafter. Awesome, managed to beat Mono Blue Flyers. I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached, we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.